women need to be healed and the mothers can heal the children best when they heal they more patient they more perceptive they more intuitive basically the term a healed sister that's part of a healed sister's group is a whole tesla coil full of control energy flow what you mean control energy flow right when you broken we have a term in science for the loss of energy called entropy entropy is when something is needing more energy than it can take in to sustain itself and so it's an energy loss taking place and that energy loss is the entropy or the falling away from something. So <clears throat> we take in um we take in food, but if we don't eat enough, we start developing malnutrition, but nobody don't stop to take the time. If we don't take the time to heal spiritually, we ain't no good to nobody. Because that's when you start having depression, you start having psychological dysfunctions and disorders. Because you're not healed. When you healed, you can't be insane. When you heal, you can't be you can't produce sociopathic children. You can't produce narcissistic children. You can't produce it because the you will understand the nature and you will know how to nurture every kind of child by being healed. As a mother, your intuition is that on point. That's the law of nature. It has nothing to do with what I like, want, or am choosing. It's just the facts of this is nature. And we nature coming back to reclaim this, this shit. Now, y'all can take it back if you want to, or you can leave it to the enemy so we can be at his whim. It really, I'm not finna be under nobody motherfucking thumb. I don't care what happened. So at the end of the day, the heal women, heal children, they heal families. And they, the family tree don't look like it's in chaos, it looks well trimmed and groomed. The whole forest looks neat because everybody's family tree is naturally pruned. You don't, you don't need an outside source to control the internal function. <clears throat> so let me see what's in here. First, peace, peace, right? Peace, guys. Right. I want to end on what you were saying, man, because. Man, I didn't got some information about myself uh, over these past few months, and this topic is a it's a, a a very important topic. Our sisters is in need of healing, and not only them but the children. And me myself, I personally came across the realization of knowing I'm a healer myself. I uh, healed the mother of my son one. So like, yeah, man, we need as much groups as much. As much as we could get, brothers, sisters, everybody. The um, sister healing groups is so important because it's not just a womb healing; it's a holistic healing exactly. of the being. It, and it's the sisters coming together. This is why there's no men invited, right? Because yeah. it's pure, it's pure love energy, all mm -hmm. mitochondria. Right. <laughs> And when that much mitochondria is activated in Florida, that is the alarm. That's the final call, right? Ain't right. no call after that. That's the main blow. The, 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 that's the, it. Power attack. Facts. Right. Hey, those are the daughters of the righteous that's been waiting way too long to get what they deserve from putting up with the bullshit on this planet and these people mistreat, miseducating the men on how to speak to, listen to, sit with sleep with women this is why the everything's in dysfunction the dysfunction is because women are broken and ain't nobody trying to heal them. well we got somebody that's healing them and she ain't just trying she got a track record thanks she got a track she got a history it's like she can go by and say what's your resume to heal women and she can say she can roll out with a parade of sisters that she didn't heal. They could, like, they could take over New York and have a whole parade. They ain't got to say shit type shit. They ain't got to say nothing.
the shit that you want to see? Okay, let's we're we gonna do a hill sisters parade. Well, sisters need to be parading to the healing sisters to get healed. Yeah, they could do it. It's the it, and it ain't and it ain't like it's a sexist thing. It's just yeah. the smartest thing in the world yeah. to possibly do. Because I knew that I got that download. I'm like, okay, I can heal wounds, but like. Most of our sisters not gonna want a brother to do that shit. They gonna want the sisters to do that shit. Like it's a whole different thing when the sisters healing you. Right. Mitochondrial healing is different. Right. Right. When we can heal one woman, a mitochondrial group of four women can heal four thousand or forty thousand. That's the difference. So sister go go get healed. That's all. That's it. Everything better. It's like having a peanut butter sandwich with no jelly. Then all of a sudden, you got <laughs> jelly on your peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Woo, man. Hey. Mm. Sisters be healed, boy. They do something to you. That's why I couldn't get a date. Bro broke sister, a sister that's broken. I don't got to know she's broken, but she ain't going to give me the time of day. Mm -hmm. you know, when I came home from the train, they used to be like, oh, I already know. Know what you on? You on that old smart shit? What? And then the other ones, they oh, you on that old muscle shit? <laughs> <laughs> what that got to do with giving me a conversation? I'm like, shit, so, I ain't messing with you. You on that smart shit? <laughs> put you down immediately. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I appreciate the call, man. I'm about to take another call, or Peace, is. brother. All right. <clears throat> Man. See, people be judging the book by its cover. Let me tell y'all a secret. I want y'all to <clears throat> look up a story by Khalil Gibran called John the Madman. Read that story. <laughs> Peace, God. Peace. Peace, Brother Rod. Um, hey, I can't see you. Can you see me now? Oh, oh hey. <laughs> How you doing? I like your hair. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm doing Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm so excited because I've been like chatting with you for a while and like I've been wanting to get on one of your lives for so long. Um, but I want to keep it short. So I basically my question is kind of like about a lot of the stuff that you talk about. Um, my mother, I recently lost my mother like two years ago, it was in April this year. And it was almost like after she passed, um, it was almost like that's when my spiritual awakening like really kicked in. And I feel like she was um, in our family, like the matriarch, like of our family. A lot of people, like since she's passed, have like kind of brought that up that like she was kind of the. We have a grandmother still that's alive, and like she's our physical mm -hmm. matriarch, but like she's even said that like my mom was kind of the one that like kind of kept us all together. She was like really the glue. Yeah, she was the glue of our family, and like, um, so yeah, but like my mom, she was also kind of always seen as like the 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 one like a little off her rocker too like a lot of people always would like joke about that too like she was a little quirky and i get that from her a lot that like we're very similar like people have told me that like once she left like i kind of took in her essence and i guess my question just would be that like i feel like not in no like cocky way but i feel like i'm the one like in our family that's supposed to Did take up that mantle now and, like carry on kind of what she was doing because Do she kind of left early like, she, I feel like she all went to Yes. The oracle. Yes. And the oracle yes. said, "Sorry, you're not the one. You got the, the gift." And when you got ready to tell Morpheus, Morpheus said, "That wasn't for me. That was for you." <clears throat> Be cocky. Be arrogant. Right. But just tell the truth. Okay. Accept yourself and be who you are. Right, right. Your mama already talking to you, sweetie. Right. She left you right. a whole right. list of instructions. Follow them. They work. Yeah. Don't doubt yourself. Yeah. 
I just feel like, yeah, I was going to say, I feel like I be doubting myself a lot because, like, me and her was really, like, the only type of people kind of in our family. I mean, other people are starting to kind of wake up as well, but I feel like we was the only ones that was really, like, strong-willed about it. They're like, this is what the fuck it is, and, like, we not, like, you know, like, like going off of that. <laughs> Um, so I feel like that'd be the only thing that'd be making me doubt myself. I'd be feeling like I don't, like I'm still young and like I don't really know. But you black, but yeah, girl, I, magic I, I walking did, around in the flesh. She did. She did give me her instructions. You, a, you the whole black girl magic walking around wondering if you really magical for real, doing the magic for everybody else but yourself. Right. Fall back, regroup. For your family, you are the one. As soon as you say you is, when you say you is, you're going to stop looking at that torch your mama dropped and just pick that motherfucker up and keep moving. Because right. she said, if the torch fall, baby, just pick it up and keep moving. Right. She just don't use my terminologies, but she gave you the information to tell you the story. She told you who not to fuck with. Yeah, leave she, she leave that nigga alone. Did. Leave that bitch alone. She crazy. She flat out told you. <laughs> Black girl magic is most activated by self-confidence. Yeah. They come across as cocky and arrogant to those who don't understand the nature of who you are. Go back and watch the, the college finals again. Right. Where you, where, what city you in? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm from um, I mean I I remember you said you was in the Delaware area. I'm from New Jersey, but like it's in South Jersey. I'm our family is from Pensgrove, New Jersey, and I don't even know if people I really live know in Newark area, but it's like literally ten minutes away from Delaware. Look, I had to go everywhere um that I was gonna be called to answer okay, for. Well, then, yeah, yeah. I had to see what the survey of the land was. And New Jersey was the land of Black Girl Magic, Asada Shakur. And the queen is in exile. <clears throat> as soon as we get enough healed sisters, she going to yeah. come home with a black girl magic parade and a whole bunch of sisters wearing black tight-ass leather jackets, black jeans and boots with afros like yours. That, that's going to be her personal clique. Her, that's her sister healing group. And, and don't be surprised if Finney ain't walking in there and a couple more of them they told you ain't here. Black girl magic a bad motherfucker when they realize who they is. Trust in yourself. If you got it, you got the gift. Hell yeah, I'm stuck. If you need see, if you need some help, I gotta give you any answer. Any, I gotta answer anything you ask Thank me. You I gotta much. give you the answer, you. no matter what it is, whether I like it or don't like it. I still gotta tell you the truth. So if you need the help, I gotta give it to you. We on a mission. Absolutely. It's a good, this, this, you a good guest you for, the, out for the theme of the day. <clears throat> Got his glow up. <laughs> I would, this is really crazy, Brother Rock, because I've been trying so hard to like get on one of your lives to like talk to you. I got to so, like, this is really crazy. Um, I mean, and if you had time, I had one last question on my my last question um was about um it kind of had to do with what you were talking about today as far as the water so like um my mom she was an aquarius and you know that's the water um the person holding the water pitcher pouring but water also symbolizes spirit which i'm aware of but like while my mom was living we um me and her had a very deep connection with the river that we live close by to and like she would always take me down there i would go down there by myself sometimes just sit like just sit by the water, but I never really thought much of it until, again, like after I feel like I started to have my spiritual awakening and I made those connections and like, now I go down there and I'll sit and talk, like, you know, to great spirit, just, or I'll talk to my mom, like, you know, just talk to my ancestors. Um, But I guess I had gotten advice from somebody that was telling me when I was trying to get into um divination, they had told me to go to the water and to just like get better acquainted with the water, I guess the spirit of the water that we're close to, so I guess, like, just how would you, like, what would be your advice on that? Like, how to better, like, get close with the water? 
Because I'm a Pisces too. Mm -hmm. I'm a Pisces too. All so three like the water have really the three like sisters. A part of my life, like you got Oye, Yemiya, and Oshun at, at the river. They gonna channel your energy and tune you in to the psychological frequency where your mother is gonna be the voice that talks to you. You gonna hear it in your head, like she's standing in the room. Wear white. But the day wow. that you go to give an offering to Oye, wear her colors. When you go to give offerings to Yimmy Yah, wear her colors. When you go get offerings to Oshun, wear her colors. <clears throat> you're doing the two. What you're doing is opening what's called a two-way spirit channel. The two-way spirit channel ties us back to the what we call the ancestors of the first time. The first first time was when we laid the foundations of the creation that we call Earth, right? It's the seven sisters. But you have to get the three ladies of the lake, the three sisters, to call to push you or raise you to so that you can identify the seven sisters, which is the seven spiritual energies of the earth's creation. And turning up your mitochondrial aids you in communicating with all of the earth spirits, which is the great sisters that's going to empower you to do your mission. Because you already know you got some heavy lifting to do later, but you have to get trained for it first. Your mama did her part, and she had to get out your way because you would have been looking for her to tell you what to do instead of being the leader that you meant to be. My mama did the same shit to me. She checked out on my ass. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I be telling her, like, she you, was you going. left me a little early. I wasn't um, prepared. But the but whole I, thing I about it is when she did, the broken heart from it, right, is it, the major catalyst to the spiritual awakening, right? Because before you can see the vessel in the dark, you first have to shatter the shell around it, right? right. And that shell around it, the broken vessel shines the brightest in right. the dark. Yeah. And you can find yourself. So when Mama check out, she's telling me, it's time for me to come out onto the land and tell the people what's going on. Who did it? Where they come from? Why they done it? How they done it? You right. know, and what the remedy is. <clears throat> the greatest remedy we can give is more healed sisters. Healed women everywhere. Burn them goddamn veils in the Middle East. Put them big mamas back in charge, take house, out to the gallows, and off with their motherfucking head. They all got these positions to dominate these women so they can marry children, prepubescent children, eight and nine years old. Come on, and get the big mamas of the land back they shit in the Middle East. And don't leave none left. They carry that, that motherfucking bullshit and they Red motherfucking bloody stained hands. We know they doing it. They told us they doing it. They showed us they doing it. They ain't hiding it. They got the women walking around in the 400 degree heat in a black ass hijab covered from head to toe. She got to be hot. The ones who can't culturally reassimilate is allowed to wear whatever they want to wear. But the new generation going to break free. Because it's the time of these sisters of the earth to get their shit back. Mama told me, make sure my sisters get all their shit. If it's one rock that belonged to one of my sisters tucked in the corner somewhere, I'm going to find that motherfucker because we're going to get it all back to him. Believe in you. Believe in you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you Thank you so it. much for the one. Thank you so much. I okay. really appreciate it. Peace, brother. I'm gonna... That's a beautiful sister. I saw. Oh, my man's in here. What's up, dog? <laughs> I ain't talked to him in a minute. King Kong motherfucker up in this. <laughs> Dude! Oh, What's up, so up nephew? Well, What's going on, man? 
I ain't, I forgot I sent the request, man. I was yeah, because you show in the pitch black. I can't see nothing but your teeth. <laughs> yeah. uh, What's up, man? What's up, man? We got light back here. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Hey, y'all have made my day. Now I already got yeah, to I talk to the sisters. I got to talk to him a little, the little man. What's up? <clears throat> but yeah, man, I, I, I want to I discuss this topic with you, man. I really forgot I sent the request, but I wanted to talk to you about the... Uh, a post you had put up about a week ago, and I went, I, I went and watched American Maroon when you had like literally like twenty minutes after you posted, I saw it and pulled it right up and watched it, and like, and it's funny because I got sent, I got sent down here to Florida, July twenty, like end of July, I mean end of December. I, I've been down in Florida since Listen. December. I'm out here right now. We about to go to the beach, go climb a couple coconut trees. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, look. When you hear the term maroon, right? Maroons mean stranded. Those were because the one the Africans that they brought over here to mix with us. There wasn't no slave. They didn't bring no massive slaves on those ships. But them dudes took over. This is what the Joseph sent you story all about. Um, not Joseph sent you the Amistad story. The Amistad story. Um, is showing you how they became what we call maroons when they were because this shit we was fighting on both sides of the water the same enemy right? right and they knew that so they keep telling us that this ports in ghana was slave ship ports that's not what they was probably shipping slaves out of there going into northern africa into the uh into the barbary north under the uh reign of um, desert Arabs like Tipper Tib, who was a massive slave trader and the richest slave trader on record. Those are the families that was doing the slave trading. They wasn't pale skinned Europeans as the history books would uh, lead us to believe. These was black, the Negro Peans, the melanated Europeans who call it, they financed and bankrolled it, and then they, they cousins that they call Arabs. These the ones who was doing the actual hands-on go in and get a motherfucker. And they still doing that in uh, Somalia, the Sudan, and Ethiopia. They still raiding villages in the name of uh, Allah and Muhammad over there, putting motherfuckers in bondage. But that shit going to come to an end, too. When they see this motherfucker, when they see this shit switch, that shit coming to an end, too. But the Maroons joined in with the Gullah Geechee. This is why so much African culture in the Gullah Geechee culture. The Gullah Geechees is from the uh, North South Carolina area in their tribal lands and they were several different tribes, right? So we take Giddy Getchy, Gullah Getchy, oh, he, he didn't dropped out, and Giddy Getchy. These tribes was the, the ones who called the tribes to war in Florida. Some of us stopped off to fight the French in the Louisiana Territory in uh, Haiti, and others of us continued on to fight the Spanish in uh, in the Gullah Wars that they call Seminole Wars. <clears throat> we was fighting a royal family called the Tudors. The Tudors was was Negro Peans, Blackamoors, who had ruled Europe during the Dark Ages. I see it cut you out, um, but I'm going to finish this, and then I'm going to the next caller. So this is the people we was fighting and the Maroons was instrumental strategists because they had already been fighting with the dirty Moors coming up and down Africa. They remember, they end up in Europe because they got kicked out of Africa. Add that shit up. They, got, they ended up in Europe because they got kicked out of Africa, but they came into Africa by way of the Indus Valley in the um, what we call today the Middle East, the uh, Arabia, what they was doing was Babylonians with this blood magic, money magic shit, and the, the great deceivers. <clears throat> These is the ones, the earth from the city of fire. This is why they say hell burn, hell the fire in the city of uh, Ur. The trash dump was called uh, Gehenna. And it was stoked with coals and sulfur, what they call fire and brimstone. And anybody that they deemed a criminal, they threw their ass in there. This is where your hell concept comes from. The rest of it comes from your Dante's Inferno because they use fiction 
in order to take their religious doctrines to pass off as facts in order to create the sensationalism required to seduce the minds of the people. Let that sink in. But the Maroons and the Gedegichi and all the other tribes that went into Florida whooped ass. We was It was bloody. <clears throat> it's the bloodiest war ever fought on this land in Florida. The Gullah Wars. That's why they don't like to talk about it. They they might not even have a line about it in the um in in the modern history book. It might not be one line, but we've been in a perpetual war for five hundred years. It's called a protracted struggle. A five hundred year war takes on many different um appearances. It go it's, it's an entity. It becomes a its own living entity, and the only way to kill it which is the slaying of the devil, is to end the war once and for all and usher in a new era, a new age of peace. This shit is not rocket science. It's just voodoo. The balance in the laws of nature by informing the masses of the people of the state and conditions of the movement of the energy and who this, how it was being manipulated against us. That's it. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to take another caller. I'm gonna get some sisters in here because I want to ride that goddess glow up energy. If the brothers, if I miss some of y'all, don't don't panic. I'm gonna come back on another time and take the fellas mostly. But right now, I'm gonna, I want to get some of these sisters that might want to talk about some of this sister healing group energy and um, this mitochondrial uplift. You know, uh, heal women ain't nothing like it. And it even changes the dynamic of the sex. It's like before that should be garbage because she broken. But when she healed, that should be motherfucking crap. Okay, so. She must be busy. I'll try another one. Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Oh, hello. Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm shocked I'm on the live, but I'm doing well. How are you? Don't, don't be shocked. We live on stage. This is the sister's day right here, so don't be shocked. Okay. What's on your mind, though? Where you calling from? I'm in Chicago. City of Wing. That's where I just left from over there. I just came home Friday. Really? Yep, I was over there last week. What part of Chicago were you in? Um, I was just all over that motherfucker. You know, you would be out of town, you'd be bouncing around. But I came to see my my grandbaby and my daughter, and um, oh, my other grandbabies. Yeah. 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 So what's on your what's your name? My name is Sanaya, but most people call me Naya. Naya, ain't that something? So Naya, um, I can't believe this. <laughs> Wait, what's happening? One of my babies is Naya, the fire, because she came to burn this bitch down if her daddy shit ain't right. That's crazy. She, uh, real son. <laughs> I think I, I think Naya Taurus, but I tell you what, she ain't for no games. She said, I came to burn this bitch down if my daddy shit ain't right. She coming out the red house. That's right. She's stone. Need that. Well, my question <laughs> is... um. I just been, I know I'm supposed to be doing something different from what I'm doing right now. Right now, I've been working full time at a grocery store and my grandmother passed and that spurred the catalyst for me to get my own place. So I'm in my own place working full time to support my bills, but I'm not happy working. I know I'm not supposed to be serving people in that way. Like I'm supposed to be in my home. Um, Up service. My You're not supposed supposed to be serving you're supposed to be offering services it's a difference yeah. in other words you ain't supposed to be slaving you supposed to be assisting right i feel like i'm being undervalued at work like things i have to do they with. absolutely don't know what your value is because they don't know who you is right listen you got a set of skills write them down everything you know how to do write it down on a piece of paper right and when you look at it the question that you're trying to answer you this is a job resume you read and you trying to find out what are what is this resume applying for? I know what I'm good at and I know what I love to do. So I guess with that I just gotta figure out 
how to take the leap because I'm not sure what that so looks like. And you need an exit strategy from work yeah. and an entry st strategy into your purpose. Right, exactly. So exactly. I'm going to tell you a secret about your purpose. If you follow your purpose, it's going to exit your ass out of that job. You ain't going to have to figure it out, none of that. 